Hello everyone, welcome back to another gorgeous day of gardening in the Delta. It's a nice, beautiful, sunny day. No rain expected, rats. We need some rain. Before I begin, there's links down below to the other channels. There's Cooking with Mary Sue, my weekend recipe, Brother Claude Reflex, Susie Q Knickknacks, and a link to my eBay store. And you the title of my new uh, children's book down there about Miss Kitty. We may see Miss Kitty out here today. She's usually out here with us somewhere running around. If we do, you'll see her in a little bit. Today, Claudia is going to be talking about a gardener's best friend, fungicide and brush killer, both. He's never without either one. I keep him well stocked. We discovered a few days ago, walking around, looking at stuff that some of our plants have developed. Where, 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 right where is it? Where is yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, there it is, that white stuff. I, oh, at I first... Remember. At first, I thought it was bird poop, but he said, no, it's not. It's a fungus. I mean, keep it still. I get it. Well, the wind's kind of blowing. Yeah, the wind's blowing. I had it down. There it is, that white powdery stuff. And once you get it on one plant, it will easily spread to your whole garden. So he's going to run, go all over the place around, not run, but walk around the place and spray the fungicide on everything. He's been doing it the last couple of days. See, there's some more. Let me hold it still. There's some on the leaf there. Maybe some down here on this mum, but he's been spraying it, and it will, it's not fast, but we'll get rid of it in just a few days. Hopefully we'll catch it before it does much more damage. Okay, this is called Fungicide 3. The, the brand is Garden Safe, and it's a, a fungicide, of course, that's the name of it, but it says it controls black spot, rust, and powdery mildew, which is the problem we're trying to combat now. It also is an insecticide. It controls aphids, white flies, and other insect pests that you have around the house. It also controls spider mites. That's great. Yeah, so it's a triple threat we have to such the a, enemies of the garden. We have such a large place to, to spray around here. He's going to use a hose in sprayer, but I have ordered some that are handheld for smaller spaces. But for bigger areas, it's better to use the um, garden spray, the hose. You can okay. get more area. Here we go. Uh -oh, let me back up. Whoa, that came out easy, fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's just, it's just that easy. Okay. And uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to stop it right here. Let's go out to the Magnolia. Okay, we're going to travel with our brush killer out to Magnolia, and we may have to use some fungicide out there also if we find any, but he's going to continue his battle of trying to kill poison ivy everywhere. And there's a lot of it, and unwanted trees growing up under the Magnolias. Uh, we go back over to this one over here we had yesterday? No, nope, that one? Okay, we got three big huge ones out here, and some small ones growing. Be right back. Hey. There's lots of all kinds of things going in here we don't want to grow. Poison ivy, small little trees. Uh, what's that other sweet bush? But well, you want to keep the sweet bushes. Uh, it's over under the other tree, not this one. Yeah, we'll show that in a little bit. And sometimes there's hollies under here, oak trees popping up. I you can see a small holly under here. You want to try to catch these little bitty unwanted trees while they're small before they get too big to do anything with. There's some elm trees. And elms, okay. Definitely don't want elm tree growing up under the magnolia. There's a little bitty holly starting to grow. Right there. Holly trees will pop up everywhere. That's Virginia creeper. Mm, another no, vine. No another unwanted vine. Well, we have all kinds of vines he's been trying to get rid of for the last couple of years. Virginia creeper and ash, uh, Asian jasmine, that's a hard one to get rid of. Some of these, as you see, some of my nose are in bloom here. Wow. That's poison oak. That's a big one, poison oak. Yeah. yeah. Now then, I need to tell you people this. If uh, poison oak, and this is a proof, if it doesn't have anything to climb on, it will make a small tree. Yeah, that tree there is at least about almost three feet tall already. Yeah. There's 
there's Miss Kitty coming to join us. She's always out here trying to find out what we're doing. Yeah, hey Miss Kitty. Hey Miss Kitty. She's the star of my new children's book called Awesome Adventures of Miss Kitty and Her Woodland Friends, which is available on Amazon, eBay, Barnes & Noble, and iTunes. Now that I've plugged my book, let's go back to killing stuff, like weeds. A brush killer will kill anything you spray it on. So be careful where you spray it. If you accidentally spray it on something that you don't want to kill, you need to immediately cut off that part that you spray. Like it might be one leaf or one branch or something by accident. Cut it off so it doesn't spread to the rest of the plant. Okay, It'll kill something about a week usually. Okay, you can come around here. How here, okay? Yeah. Okay, here's one of those sweet rugs. All right, you're saving yeah, those, right? Save that. You want to save the sweet shrub, okay? Yeah, but won't save it here. Uh huh. Uh, this fall, I'll dig it up and put it somewhere else. Yeah. But if you see behind it, uh -huh. we got some more that old dreaded poison ivy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. We got a lot of that sweet shrub under here. Might save some and move some because we got so many under here under these magnolias. Evidently, a lot of things like to go in the shade more than we thought. Oh, there's a flower petal over there getting ready to bloom, that big one there. Those, uh, those magnolia buds are pretty big, about four or five inches tall. If we come across another flower and leave it open, we'll show you how big they are. They can grow seven, eight inches across, about as big as a, or bigger than a hibiscus flower. There's another plant that you don't want. Okay. It's called hedge. Oh gosh, yeah. No hedge Hedges plant. are terrible. Those hedge plants, mm. they will go up into a tree. They grow fast. They spread fast. These are seed pods, aren't they right here? Yes. Okay. That comes out after the bloom is finished. Mm -hmm. Some more like oh, poison no, ivy, poison oak, okay. Virginia creeper. Mm -hmm. And then some more poison oak. It takes about 10 days, 2 weeks for that brush killer to work. It will uh, work its way down to the root of the plant. Oh, look at this one. Yeah, that one's already dry. Uh huh. And <laughs> they can hurt. They're hard. Yeah, when I was a, a small boy, when, believe it or not, I was a boy once. There's another one. Uh, the seed pod. We had a magnolia tree in the schoolyard, and when these seed pods got hard, we would have uh, battles with them. There it is. Like. Kids in the wintertime, you see them having snowball fights. Well, we had the uh, magnolia seed pod fights. <laughs> and they don't feel quite as soft as a snowball hitting you. <laughs> Not exactly. Okay. Look here. What's over here growing? Right in there. That's a great myrtle. Uh oh. We'll save that one. You will? Well, sure. Okay. Why would I want to throw away a crepe myrtle? Well, okay. I mean, it won't have a whole lot of room to grow up in here, but it'll grow some. Oh, no, no. I don't mean leave it here. Oh, you're going to move it later? Yeah. Okay. Mm. I thought you were going to let it grow here. <laughs> All righty. Yep. We got crepe myrtles pop up everywhere, too, around here. While we're spraying to kill stuff, we're also kind of keeping an eye out for any fungus we might see around here to spray. Because we really don't want any fungus starting on these magnolias. These magnolias are humongous. They're probably anywhere from 60 to 80 feet tall and about that same in the width diameter. I'm pretty sure they were probably planted when they built the house. They're probably at least 50 or 60 years old. And we like them because they're not trimmed at the bottom. A lot of people trim the magnolias around the bottom, trim the skirt up, but we don't. They're beautiful when they touch the ground. What's that big tree up there growing? Look. 
something I don't want. Something you don't want, okay. <laughs> I'll uh, have to get my uh -huh. oh, chainsaw in here to cut that down. Remember yesterday under, uh, under the other magnolia we came across a hedge plant that mm -hmm. had grown about 15 feet tall? Mm -hmm. We've got to yeah. cut it out. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but it's going to be cut down out of there. Yeah. If you had your app, we could find out what it is. But anyway, it's not a magnolia. Uh-huh. So, it's got to go. Don't want to keep going up in the magnolia? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, at this point, it's in the magnolia, so I can't really spray it mm -hmm. without hitting some magnolia. It's too big, yeah. So, I'm going to have to cut it down. Then, if it comes up from the roots, I'll keep an eye out. And I'll spray it at that point. Like I said, if you accidentally hit something with a poison that you don't want to kill, hurry up and cut that piece off that you sprayed so it won't spread to the root. Here's another gorgeous bloom, about ready to open all the way. It's about half open. They are so beautiful. This is the state flower of Mississippi, if you didn't know that. And I can see why. It's a beautiful tree with beautiful, huge flowers. All the blooms don't open all at one time on the tree. Well, that may be magnificent if they did. Here's another one starting to grow out. Another bud. Oh, hedge plants. See another hedge in there you got? You just got? I saw that. What you find over here? Poison oak. Some more poison up oak. In there. Back up in there, okay. That's your Miss Kitty. Uh -huh. She's up on here somewhere. If you plant a magnolia, you got to keep in mind how big these things get over time. I have seen people plant these sometimes really close to the house or close to a fence, not realizing how big they're going to get. This is a pretty massive, humongous tree. It gets to be 80 feet tall and about 60 feet wide. That's huge. She just ran out. Yeah, she was in the tree. I was going to get you to take a picture of her in the tree. <laughs> There's another tree that's uh, I'm going to have to get the chainsaw, although it's not that big, it's uh -huh. up among a lot of magnolia leaves. Oh, okay, So okay. I'm going to have to take care of it by cutting it down. When these trees make a great tree house up in here for little kids to play under? <laughs> <laughs> Hide up in like a little tent of four or fortress? Are you talking about me? Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, that's about all we can do with this tree. Okay, we'll pause a second. We're going across the yard to investigate under these other two magnolia trees and see what we can find under there to kill and get rid of. As you see from here about how tall they are. Like I said, they are massive trees. They're beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, these trees have never been trimmed. We do keep it trimmed away from the driveway there just a little bit, but the bottom they still have their, what you call their skirts, which means they go all the way to the ground. Some people trim these up where you can walk on them, but I really don't like them like that. I love them big. Look how small Claude is next to the tree. <laughs> Here we got two giant magnolias. They're about 20 feet apart from each other. And in the middle here, Claude planted a pretty little fringe leaf Japanese maple. It's doing very well. It gets part sun, part shade, and it will grow up to be about six feet tall, eight feet wide. It's got pretty delicate foliage on it. And it does great here in part shade. Okay, what'd you find over here now, Claude? Yeah, well, we've got a lot of the same problem that we had over there. There's a hedge plant right there. A hedge, a hedge, yeah. Right uh -huh. next to it, some poison ivy. Some more poison ivy here. Was this one we found the big hedge up under the other day? Yeah. That's a huge hedge that got out of control before we knew it, and it's about 12 feet tall up in here. He's going to have to cut that down with a chainsaw to get it out of there. Because if left over time, it would just about 
keep growing and take over the magnolia just about. <laughs> and somewhere here, I know, up under here, there was a mm -hmm. kind of holly. Mm -hmm. More poison ivy. Now we can't spray that one. It's kind of close to that magnolia unless you spray the edge of it out mm -hmm. here. Yeah. He's got gloves on and yeah, put his foot down. Great, put it down there so it doesn't Sometimes hit the. Sometimes I have to put my foot down with Mary Sue and so <laughs> <laughs> I learned how to do that with these. Uh, here's some more poison ivy mm -hmm. and an oak tree, but another different kind of oak tree. Yeah, oak trees are bad about just popping up everywhere. Just same as uh, crepe myrtles do. We got enough oak trees around here. We got probably hundreds of oaks already big. We don't need any more. Okay, for sure. Especially we don't want them to grow. We've had to, we had one that partially fall last year. Mm-hmm. And we had to have it cut down and hauled off. And uh, Miss Mary Sue will tell you, I don't like to spend money. <laughs> There's that part of that uh, hedge over there. I see it. The hedge tree, but that might be different. That's not one taller than that in here. Yeah. That might be a different one. I think it is a different mm -hmm. one. But uh, I'm going to have to get up in there also and cut it down. It's yeah. too tall for me to spray right now. Me pause. Here's more poison ivy over here. There's a cedar tree trying to grow. We're going to have to get rid of. Don't need a giant cedar on here. Cedars can get 50, 60 feet tall also. We've got a few of them out in the bigger spaces where they have more room to grow. There goes Miss Kitty again. Yeah. Bye. Uh-huh. Here is uh, the big hedge. Oh, let me come over there and here. see. Hold on. Okay, Claude found the big hedge tree up under here. There's been, oh, it goes way up. It's at least about 20 feet tall. Evidently, it just started years ago and nobody caught it in time, and it's grown out of about out of control. Well, we've been here for almost four, four years, years. Four years, about, yeah. So, it was here then. I just overlooked it. And so, mm -hmm. I feel it now. Okay, let me go over here. Here's another sweet bush, I think, which he'll probably transplant. There, look at that, isn't that gorgeous? I was looking down, he was looking up and he saw this on a higher branch. It is beautiful. Mm. It's not quite, it's, it's open, but it will get wider as the petals come down and it, it spreads out more. Now, if you look back in there, there's a pretty good size holly starting to grow. It's already about two feet tall. He's going to have to spray that. Maybe dig it up or cut it. Or at least it's, it's in a good spot to spray because it's not close to anything else. Yeah. Let me see if I can get up in there. Okay. Hold on. He climbed up in there. I think he just went a few step under the tree. Are you spraying it? I should kill it in a few weeks. It'll be gone. Man, you get up under there, it's like you're in another world under there. <laughs> you gotta climb back out. Here's a good spot where you can get up under the tree pretty well. It's an open space here. This kind of reminds me of a big tree we saw one time down in Hawaii a few years ago. What was that big tree we saw in Hawaii? Oh, big old or Boa Boa, yeah. Big. Yeah. It was the whole biggest, the whole city block. Yeah. It was over, over 500 years. <laughs> he loved getting up in the tree. <laughs> ah, that branch is uh, big enough to hold him. He's having fun sitting on it. We'll make a little tree house. Make a little tree house under there. <laughs>
Wouldn't that be Good great under here? Yeah. <laughs> Man, we kids. Three houses called the deck. Kids would love to climb this tree. <laughs> so many branches on it. It'd be easy to climb, sort of, too. All the branches. How long do these things bloom? I know these bloom throughout the summer. Uh, just June. June? Mainly June? Yeah. Okay. But like you said, the problem is you've got to bloom here in the bloom there. Yeah. It would be beautiful yeah. if they bloom all at once, but they don't. Oh, man, it would be gorgeous if it bloomed all, all at one time. But this kind of uh, gives you a little bit to see throughout the summer, through the whole month, a few blooms here and there. Crunch, crunch. They're noisy. You step on these. Very noisy. Whew. We're out of there. That's another one of those sweet shrubs that you like. Um, you can maybe wondering why I just leave the uh, magnolia leaves here. The magnolia, uh, as you probably know if you live in the south, is evergreen down here. But they do drop their leaves, and I leave them here on the ground because it discourages uh, weeds from coming up. Mm -hmm. As you can tell, there's not uh, very many weeds, just a few little uh, things that we have to get rid mm -hmm. of. Uh, you see no yeah. grass growing up under there. Now this sweet shrub is in a good spot where you can leave it. It's got a lot of space to grow right there. It'll be pretty right there. She's talking about the sweet shrub right uh -huh. here. Smells, they smell pretty, don't they? That's why they call it sweet mm -hmm. shrub. Yeah, they have tiny pink blooms on them. Okay. Let me see if they can have some blooms. No. Nope. No blooms yet? Uh, okay. No. Some of them are, are in bloom now. That's All right. Probably too young to be in bloom. Yeah. We got uh, four of these huge magnolias in the front yard and one or two in the backyard. There's a few more popping up out that way in the forest. Uh, somebody wanted me to count them one time. Uh, I counted in the front in the backyard. Nine. Nine magnolias, okay. Yeah. We've come across a few baby ones popping up down by the driveway. He's going to transplant this fall. Yeah, they're about what, two feet tall. About two feet tall, good size mm -hmm. transplant, but yeah. you don't it's transplant in the summer. Right yeah, too hot to transplant now. Do that in the fall. You should transplant like in October, November, before you get frost. See, look, look at here. No mm -hmm. grass, no weeds, and yeah. just one tree uh -huh. that Hello. won't be there in two weeks. It's gone. <laughs> okay, I guess we end this here just about. We'll be back tomorrow with another educational video I hope <laughs> I'm going to be planting some more stuff on the deck pretty soon I got a few more plants to get planted do you have time for me to tell them what to do if they touch poison ivy oh that's right yes yeah, some good tips okay. I almost forgot about that okay of course you avoid poison ivy and poison oak when you can but if you accidentally touch it what you do is immediately go in the house and Wash your hands with uh, Clorox. Or whatever part it touched, your arm, your leg, or whatever part it touched. Yep. Put bleach on it. Yeah, put bleach on it. Yeah. Any brand. It doesn't have to be Clorox. What does the bleach do? I don't know. It tells it. <laughs> <laughs> it will, it will, more than likely, you should keep it from popping out and getting worse if you catch it fast enough. I got a few friends that do that, and they say it works. Uh, if you put uh, the bleach on immediately after you've been touched by it. Also, 